Impala Films presents Haunted, the audio drama, Christmas special, A Very Haunted Christmas, part four of four, written by Jamie Evans. I'm not going to apologise anymore! I was doing what you told me to do! What I told you to do? Did I say tie up Preston and then let Cheryl go after the creatures alone? Thank you, James. I'm glad you agree. It was reckless endangerment. Shut up! Oh, you were the one who decided to stick me and Cheryl together. Put together the two with the least experience. Yeah, that makes plenty of sense, doesn't it? Just so you could go swine off with your pretty young girl. Well, you did have me and- Oh, expert. shut up! I took Abigail with me because I needed somebody who could actually read to help do the research. I gave you a task that was more befitting your mental capacity. Oh, fuck you! Ugh, that's it! Oh! Uh, you uh, uh, fucking dick! Uh, 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 shit! Guys? Just take me out of the house! Come on, come man! <laughs> My mum has been taken by weird mythological creatures and the two of you are standing here having a dick measuring contest. She'd be ashamed of both of you. I'm ashamed of both of you. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I interrupting? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. We know what they're called. They're called the Calacanzari. Calacanzari? Greek, aren't they? What are they doing here? They crave sweets and desserts, anything sugary. Oh, oh no. Your desserts around the world menu. Anything Greek on that by any chance? Oh my. Yes, I had a shipment of lakumi coming from Greece. What is lakumi? They're these colourful sweet cubes. They're like 99% sugar. These creatures are definitely attracted to sweet things. Is it possible they got into the shipment and travelled over from Greece? That does seem likely. How do we stop them? According to the book, the Kalakanzari are malevolent goblins who spend most of their lives living underground. Legend says that they spend most of the year soaring at the trunk of something called the World Tree in an effort to make it collapse. However, they always get distracted by the coming of Christmas, which is the only time of the year they can come to the surface. It's sort of comforting to know they aren't running around all the time. Apparently, they come to the surface to cause mischief and steal sweets. When they are forced to return to their underground lair, they find the world tree has repaired itself and they have to start all over again. They repeat that cycle over and over? Bloody hell, they must have memories like goldfish. It sounds like they're very easily distracted. It also sounds like they cause a lot of mischief and upset but don't actually hurt anyone. God, I hope that's true. Does it say how we kill them? We don't. You heard what Abigail said. They're not trying to hurt us necessarily. <laughs> Speak for yourself. You didn't have one ripping out your deep, manly chest hairs. We should send them back to their home. As soon as Christmas is over, they'll return underground and nobody gets hurt. Yeah, except us trying to catch the buggers again. Hold on. It says here that the Kalakanzari particularly like lo local muddies. Apparently people feed these to them to make them go away. Oh, hang on. Where do you think she went? Seriously, dude? You're eating the sausage right now? I was hungry. I've got my desserts around the world recipe book right here. We can make some of them. They're lucamades. We can? Sure, honey. They're basically just donuts with honey. I can whip some of those up mighty quick. That would be excellent. Thank you, Darlene. I'll get on it right away. We can use the treats to bait the creatures out with a more sophisticated trap than a bucket and stick. Uh, it was the best we had. The best place to lure the Calacanzari would be the post office. There we can package them up and have them shipped out directly without having to transport them. Two of us should head over there and start sorting that out, whilst two of us look for Cheryl. Darlene can call us once the Lucamardes are ready. I want to go look for my mum. Abigail, I know that you do. But I need you to go to the post office and begin setting up the trap. Why? You're the master of unlocking, remember? You'll be able to get in there without breaking a window or anything. Besides, I need you to show Dan how to set a trap properly. Oh, come on! That means you'll be stuck with Preston. <sighs> yes, it does. We're just going to scope things out. We'll be back here as soon as Darlene has prepared the bait. Can you believe it? 
We're going to save the day with baked goods. We're going to save the day with baked goods. Shh! Sorry. Somebody needs to oil these hinges. Oh, I'll tell them to get right on it. Abby, I'm sorry about your mum. She just took off before I could... Let's not. Please. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Sorry. I don't think James wants me travelling with you guys. What? Oh, come on. You heard what he said. He thinks I'm an idiot. And he'd much rather there was only you and him on the road trying to find Carl Trevino. That's just James. He's grumpy 90% of the time. And you're just kind of the focus of it at the moment. When I first met him, he got annoyed at me too. Yeah, maybe... What are you thinking? I'm thinking we want the biggest crate that they have. That one over there looks like it should do. Let's let's stick it under that support beam there. I already tried a basic rabbit trap, if that's what you're thinking. It's not. Well, sort of. Variation on a theme, let's say. Now come on, help me move it. Are you kidding me? What? How many pockets do you have in that Santa outfit? Ah, <laughs> check it out! No, no, don't open it! This coat isn't just for snacks, my friend. I've stitched in 12 additional pockets for all sorts of investigative essentials. The aforementioned snacks, some basic first aid, incense sticks, divination rods, K2 meters, spirit boxes and the like. Is that a monkey wrench? Yes, yes, well, you never know when you might need to fix a pipe or twist a particularly stubborn nut. Please don't stand so close to me. You know, you really are missing out on a trick, James. Am I? Indeed. Now you've finally opened your mind to new possibilities. My mind was always open. I just wanted hard evidence. Well, now you know the truth of this totally insane world of ours. You and I should team up to publish more books. Think about it. Adventures in the Supernatural by Connors and Hunter. My name would go first, of course, because, well... I'm the bigger draw. You could have just said because it's alphabetical. Oh, of course, of course, of course, that too, yes. But mostly the draw thing. Well, as tempting an offer as that is, Preston, I'm afraid I'll have to pass. Come on, Matt. Can't you see there'd be so much benefit to having both of our names on the cover? The dynamic works perfectly. We might even get picked up for one of those online streaming TV shows. Think about it. Me. The dashing and handsome paranormal investigator, saving damsels and serving up evil a knuckle sandwich. And you, my trustworthy and bookish researcher. Bookish? Well, of course, we'd have to get you some nicer clothes, and those all look a bit shabby. No offence, of course. None taken. I prefer a more rustic style. Rustic? (laughs) Uh, See, it's stuff like that that the audience will love. Wait a moment. Hmm? Cheryl chased them this way. Logically, the only place they would go would be up this way until they joined the road. But they could have gone anywhere once they reached the road, couldn't they? Did the book give you any way of tracking these things? No, only that they like sugar. Sugar Sugar-addicted little mischief makers. Ha! Sounds like what I always envisioned having children would be like. You don't have any kids? No, I'm afraid not. That's good. Huh? Oh, because of my dangerous lifestyle, you mean? Yes, it is unfortunately our burden to bear. I meant more that the notion of several mini Prestons running around filled me with a sense of eldritch dread, but sure. Oh, look over there. What? This mailbox has been knocked down. Could it have been them? It is possible. That certainly seems like the sort of stuff they like to get up to. Look, over there. Footprints! Those small ones are unmistakably the Calacanzari. The larger ones must be Cheryl. I cannot believe these words are about to leave my mouth, but well spotted, Preston. Why, thank you. I told you we'd make a great team. You and I gallantly storming the enemy's lair. I can already see the shot. Camera low. Smoke and flames fill the screen from the ruins of the epic battle we just had. You're battered and bruised, but safe, waiting outside. You start to tear up at the idea that you've lost your best friend forever. But then, cue music swell, like John Williams, of course. And in slow motion, I emerge from the smoke, a towering pillar of masculinity, cradling the hapless but foxy damsel in distress in my arms. Hold up a moment there, Spielberg. Why am I the one waiting outside? 
I gallantly sent you out there to protect you from the overwhelming forces of the goblins. That is not at all accurate to how that would play out. I do like the fact you're thinking of directors, though. Good shout. I do like the fact you're thinking of directors, though. Good shout. I wouldn't want Spielberg. Let's be honest, he's sort of past his prime, and I doubt he could put himself in the position of a humble ghost hunter from a working-class background. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking of a, a much more visionary director, an artist sorely misunderstood in his own time, but who I guarantee will one day be honoured rightfully amongst the Kubricks and the Scorseses of this world. Michael Bay. We should keep looking. Uh, looks like the prints head over there to those garages. Ah, we've got the little buggers now. Is that an ice cream van I can hear? It's coming from the garage. Get out the way! <laughs> Bloody hell, the little rapscallion stole that ice cream van. And they've got Cheryl. After them! Pull! I am pulling! Too much! Your side is too raised! It needs to be flush or it won't fit in! Do you really think this is going to work? They managed to get out of the rabbit traps and this isn't that much different! Except the rabbit traps relied on the Kalakanzari to trigger the release mechanism and it was very tiny! Oh, we didn't have much to improvise with! Nevertheless, this crate is much bigger and we don't move the crate itself. We put the bait in the crate and suspend the lid on ropes like this. That way it's up to us to trigger the trap and not the bad guys. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, oh, now my side's too low. All right, hold on. Ah, shit! Are you okay? Ah, yeah, it's, it's just got a friction burn from the rope. Ah. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I don't want you or James worrying about me on this trip. Lord knows I've already got in the way enough. Dan, I don't blame you for what happened to my mum. Yeah, well, James does. And he's right. I held myself back because I'm not confident with all this stuff. Right, if that had been a mugger back in Greenvale, I'd have run down that dude like it was nothing. James isn't angry at you. He's angry at himself. That's what he does. When things don't go to plan, he blames himself and then, in turn, lashes out at others. He's tightly wound. Very. I understand, of course. Well, sort of, but... He doesn't speak much about his past, but from what I do know, he's justified being angry at the world. Some could say you would be too. My dad abandoned us for another family, but he's still out there. James doesn't have anybody. Except us. Abigail, I'm sorry. For what? For everything. For making it all about me and James. If any of us have the right to be breaking down, it's you but you're the most level-headed of all of us. (laughs) I think the ship has sailed on ever being able to call me level-headed. After all, I did voluntarily listen to a demonic signal that nearly killed me just for an investigation. (laughs) Yeah, we're a right bunch, aren't we? How's your hand? Yeah, it's okay, thanks. Then quit your yakking and let's get pulling. (laughs) Okay. We have to go after them. Look, they're going down that hole there. They live underground, remember? Hang on. I don't believe it. What? When we first drove into town, Abigail crashed her car. She said she thought she heard singing. I'm fairly certain that was just over there. She must have heard the Calacanzari right under our noses from the beginning. Well, look at it this way. If you'd stopped them back then, we wouldn't have gotten into this rip-roaring adventure now, would we? (laughs) Bestie? Let's get going. Look at the state of this van. Oh, they've had most of the ice cream. Uh, pass me that massive bag of sprinkles. What's that for? Well, we're going to need to lead them back to the post office somehow, aren't we? Oh, I was afraid you were going to say that. Knock, knock. Oh, excellent. I see you got the trap set up. Oh, are those those donut things? Oh my god, they smell amazing. Here, why don't you have one? Ah, go on then. Right, let's put the Lucamardis into the crate. Uh, that lid isn't going to fall on me, is it? No, 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 don't worry, it's secure. 
Thank you so much, Darlene. We couldn't pull this off without you. Oh, well, aren't you sweet? Don't you worry about that. I I'm happy to be able to help. I never dreamed I'd be baking treats to lure magical goblins into a trap before. I wonder how James and Preston are getting on. Well, I imagine there's a fair chance James has snapped and killed Preston by this point. I can honestly say I've never met anyone so obnoxious in my life. You reckon when he writes a book about this, we'll at least come off looking good? <laughs> I doubt it, Dan. I really doubt it. Oh, bloody hell, this is a tight squeeze. Shh, we don't want them to hear us yet. Have you still got the sprinkles? Yes, I've got them. Watch out for this bend here, the ceiling dips. Ugh! Never mind. No, no, don't do that. I can hear Cheryl. Come on. Cheryl! James! What's going on? Um, I'm not sure. They're doing something to my hair and, and they've been putting some of that stuff on my face. Pretty, pretty! It's like tribal paint. Look, the Caliganzori all have similar markings. They're not hurting you? I mean, they're not exactly gentle. Ow! I told you, don't pull my hair like that. <laughs> okay, Cheryl, very slowly stand up and take my hand. Guys, thank you for your hospitality. It's a lovely cave, really. I really like what you've done with that moss on the wall there. But we really have to get going now, okay? That's right, Cheryl, nearly there. Got you. <laughs> Now you've gone and made them mad. Run! <laughs> Deploy the sprinkles, Preston. Right. <laughs> it's slowing them down. Fantastic. This way. Into the ice cream truck. Preston, pour a trail of sprinkles into the fridge. Okay. <laughs> Cheryl, can you drive? Um, sure. Okay, Preston, try and hide in the corner with me. Hopefully they'll follow the trail straight into the freezer. <laughs> Preston, hold this closed. On it? Bloody hell, they're stronger than they look. Drive, Cheryl! Okay, we've just got to get them to the post office. What was that? I think it's more of them. They're on the roof. What? They are on the roof! Oh! Ouch! I'll try and shake them off. Whoa! No! Come here! Oh, why did you bring them in here? We have to make sure they all go back. We can't leave any of them behind. Oh no. They're looking at me again! <laughs> Hello? Abigail! James, what's going on? It sounds like chaos. What? Why should the ruddy ankle? Sorry! There was a pigeon in the road. Is the trap ready? Is the what wrapped? Trap! Trap! Is the trap ready? Oh, yes. Bait all loaded. We're standing by. Open the delivery bay door. Who's Fane Moore? No, the bay door. Open the bay door. Dan, open those big doors. On it. Okay, now what? We're coming in hot. What the hell is going on? Are they on their way? He said, coming in hot. Shh! Can you hear that? Positions! I can see them! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. As soon as they're inside, close the bay doors, Dan. Right! Darlene, when I say we drop the lid, okay? Okay. Bloody hell, Abigail! It's your mum driving! What? I'm not sure they're going to get through the door swerving like that. Here we go! You little bugger! Get them over near the crate! This way, Preston! <laughs> it's working! They can smell the Lucamades! That's right, fellas, doesn't that just smell like home? 
Aha, it's working. They're letting go. That's right, guys. Back in the box. Is that all of them? Uh, yeah. Okay, Darlene, let's lower the lid. Here we go. That should hold them. Although, won't the shipping people notice when the crate starts making loads of noise? The honey will help quieten them. They'll probably sleep most of the journey. Mum, you're okay. Abigail. What happened to your face? They tried to give me a makeover. Right. We need to get this van out of here. I don't know how we're going to explain the state of it to the owner. Don't you worry about that. I know Gary who owns it. We'll get it fixed up at my husband's garage and it'll be as good as new. Come on, let's get back to the diner. That really is nice wine. Why, thank you. Well, it didn't exactly go as I had planned, but I'm so glad we came here. It's a lovely little village. Right, that's the van sorted. Abigail, your car is repaired and ready for us to pick up. Ooh, look! What? What? Is there something on my face? You two are standing under the mistletoe. You know what that means, don't ya? Oh, um... Well... (laughs) Oh, God, I'm going to be sick. I really don't think that we need to. Merry Christmas, Mr Hunter. Ha-ha. Um, I, uh, think we should be moving on now. Yes. I need to get back to Greenvale, and of course you lot need to... Quite. The sense of adventure beckons. Yes, please, let's go. It was lovely to meet you, Darlene. Oh, you too, sugar. I left my car over at the garage too, so I'll come with you. Excellent. I'll see you soon, okay, sweetie? Stay safe. You too, Mum. Text me when you get back to Greenville safely, won't you? Of course. I love you, honey. Love you too, Mum. (sighs) Gotta give it to Darlene's husband. You can barely tell the car hit the tree. That's impressive work. Indeed! What a talented fellow! Maybe I should have him service my ride sometime. I still can't believe you drive the car from Ghostbusters. Little on the nose, isn't it? Good brand awareness, my boy. I've got a rather savvy business mind, didn't you now? Oh, I'm sure. James, old chap, won't you reconsider my proposal about the TV show? James? You all right, James? We need to get a move on. What's that? It was tucked beneath the wiper blade. It's a note. You can't catch me if you don't look. Carl Trevino? Yes. Carl? Carl, that rather intense gentleman you used to hang around with back in the day, James? You're involved with him again? In a manner of speaking. Right. I see. Uh, Well, (laughs) I have to go. Lots to do, people to see, ghosts to catch. (laughs) Uh, Until next time, chaps. in a hurry. Is everything okay? You can't catch me if you don't look. Carl, he wants us to find him. He likes the chase. So what are we going to do? We're going to give him what he wants. Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter... Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin and Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard, Benton Hodges, Edina Fisher Allen, Rory Jocelyn. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Jamie Evans and Charles Topping. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next season as our story can